Oh, I love when that sting comes on because you know who's oh. in the kitchen and you know Christmas is around the corner Something when is tasting Catherine good. is making pudding. Correct. Pudding, plum pudding. Plum Christmas pudding. Plum pudding, exactly. Now, just to mention to you that for your Christmas baking, like cakes or plum puddings, you have a lot of ingredients in them. So it's important that you get all your preparation done in advance. Okay. Because otherwise you can leave something out something very important out. But by getting everything together, first of all, you're not going to leave anything out and you're going to get through your preparation a lot quicker, okay? Yeah. Right. Now, oh. I started by creaming together here uh, 175 grams, that's six ounces of butter, and 175 grams, six ounces of dark muscovado sugar. A lot of the older recipes are using suet, or they do use suet yes. in the puddings. Yeah. Now, if you're using suet, you just mix the suet What's in with suet? the suet. It's pure fat, actually. Mm. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. It's old right. school. Very Is old school, okay. yeah. Suet. Um, how would you describe suet? Disgusting. <laughs> Not too pleasant. <laughs> Adds the flavour, then. It's, it's usually the, the fat you get around kidneys. Like, where would you even get that? You, oh, a Tory, you can, you can buy shredded stuff yeah. now. Yeah, you get it only at Christmas it. time. Right, OK. Well, guess who's never made a traditional no, Christmas no. pudding? I have to no. say. I find it very, very fatty. Okay. So I prefer to so use you, butter. Even alternative. Okay, butter, yeah. perfect. So butter yeah. and sugar, cream them together, or else if you're not using, if you're using the suet, just mix the suet and sugar together. Now here I have three beaten eggs. So we're going to beat the eggs into the <laughs> beaten eggs and sugar. And to be very honest, you don't have to beat the eggs really. Right. They'll blend in if you put them in one at a time. Now, here we have. Believe oh. that's over. Now, um, another tip, particularly for Christmas cakes, have your eggs. We need a bit of controversy yesterday about eggs in the fridge, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have the eggs and the butter at room temperature before you start. Otherwise, your mixture can curdle. If your eggs are cold, the mixture can curdle, and curdling can cause the fruit to sink in a fruit cake. Yeah. So it is important that they're at room temperature. Okay. So there we've beaten in the eggs. Now, to that, we're going to add 75 grams, that's three ounces of our self-raising flour. I'm going to add to that a teaspoonful as well of mixed spice, teaspoonful of cinnamon, teaspoonful of nutmeg. And in that goes. Very nice. So basically we're just putting in the, the dry ingredients. Mm. Here I have a 200 gram pack of ground almonds. And we're just going to mix these ingredients together for a few minutes, a few seconds. It's, it's the 17th of November now. And I always remember this being like my mom's military operation, getting the cake. And the pudding's ready. Them, and that them was all done. Done well, down in, in the advance. garage. Yeah, so yeah. now is the time the to garage. kind of do them. She did them in the garage. That's where she boiled them with the... <laughs> with the steamed she them. Out her, right, she steamed yeah. them, yeah. There'll be steam everywhere. What's but I have a tip them? to overcome the steam now in a minute, right? You have to steam the pudding. Right. Yeah. Do you? OK. Steam them as opposed to baking them. But I actually steamed I them in the oven to save right. topping up with the boiling water all the time. Gotcha. Now, to that, we're going to add 225 grams of sultanas, 225 grams of raisins. You can use any combination of fruit of your choice. And in the old days, you used to have currants, and you did an awful job cleaning the currants and drying them, because they're trying to be dirty little devils. And I find they go hard during baking. So I just use sultanas and raisins. Perfect. Here I have cherries and candied peel. So we just combine these ingredients together. Now, at this stage, the mixture is quite thick, as you see. Mm -hmm. no. But we're going to add to that 175 grams, that's six ounces of breadcrumbs. And to thicken it up even more. Correct. Thin but we're going to thin it out then with some Guinness. Ah. Now, now we're talking. Now we're talking to Isla, as the fella says. <laughs> so Guinness, I didn't know, Guinness goes into... This is two, well. this is two in a row now she's had... Uh, Catherine's been here I with know, the Guinness. Exactly. Guinness. Guinness, aren't I? <laughs> now, 300 mils, that's a half pint of Guinness. And we're just going to mix that through. Right. Now, if you find it a bit on the dry side, you can add a little bit more, because depending on how fresh or how stale your breadcrumbs are, you know, it may take or need a little more Guinness. And do, do you, you have to put the Guinness in? Because, like, I suppose my dad was a teetotaler, but he'd always have uh, Christmas Some pudding. Some different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you could use orange juice or apple juice, but it's not the same. The no. flavour is not the same. You do need the Guinness for flavour. Yeah. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more into that. And then... How do you know? Just see uh, she's I know, but I would, I, how would I know? <laughs> you'll, just... know you'll know when all the breadcrumbs are gone, Tommy. OK. When you've just got quite a sloppy-looking mixture. Right. Now, what you do then is you cover that and you leave it overnight. Yes. 
so that the flavors all combine. Okay. Beautiful. So we put one of my oh, look at that. lids on top. Put the hairnet on. The hairnet on, Love right. It. <laughs> this one mightn't be big enough anyway. But well, you have one, so that one's from last night this then, is, the one is I it? This last night. And... Oh, look at that. Oh. Look what happens to it. See what happens overnight, oh. Tommy. Fantastic. Look now at the colour of it as well. You could, if you wish, add a little more Guinness, but I find that sufficient. Now, talking about things being delayed, being delivered and whatever else, yeah. Tommy, in these times, let me tell you that it's very difficult now, the hardware shop was telling me the other day, to get plastic bowls in for plum puddings. Oh, right. right. There are certain sizes not coming in. So this recipe here will make two of the smaller puddings. Okay. As opposed to the, the larger the big, one that you generally okay. make. So, right, gotcha. so what? So just stick it in to the pudding. Do you close it up then? Watch, for, it. watch for... this. Watch this. We've only got a, we've got a short, about not that long left, Catherine, but we'll, we'll, we'll watch the magic. Throw it in. We just put enough in to fill it up. Pack it in. And then you just put the lid on it. And you take your roasting tin. Do this near the oven now. You put your pudding into the roasting tin on a crisscross of tin foil, pour in the boiling water, pop in your pudding, and what oh. Take your little ban Marie, yeah. Hold on, so that's it done. Done. That's it. All oh, right. Now you steam yeah. it for about five hours, Tommy. Oh <laughs> okay. <laughs> But you do this like weeks in advance. Oh, weeks, yeah. yeah. So can I just yeah, so so when it's in that the pot, do I just leave it there? Leave, leave it there. just in in the living room for a couple of weeks. Yep. Hope the dog doesn't get out. <laughs> just to say, is it a Christmas decoration? Leaving it in the living room, <laughs> just staring at so it. Or in the try garage somebody for you. Now, Tommy. Okay, let's have a look. I know we have a special cupboard for the Christmas pudding. Goes into the cereal cupboard. Everyone has a place they put their Christmas puddings. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> now, Tommy, come on. You Custer, need Tommy. Food. Ours sits on the windowsill. Um, lovely. Okay, right. There we go. Well, go on, you go. Now, you go, you go. The pudding is steamed after about five hours. But the longer you steam the pudding, the darker the pudding gets. I don't like it too dark. I like it just as you have Do you know there. what I love about that? What? Really moist. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yep. So how do you know, how does it not dry out? Like over time? Guinness. Is it not to Guinness? You just oh, meant to say. Okay. Catherine Layden, as always, thank you so much. Now you have a sample of that, Merlin. Oh, God, I don't My pleasure, it. everybody. Catherine, thank, thank you, as thank always. Thank you so much.